Gun Owners of Reddit, What Is Your Reason To Own Firearms? My friends think I'm weird for owning a gun when I live in a safe part of the city. I'm a woman who lives alone, if a man breaks into my house, there's fuck all I can do to stop him from raping slash killing slash robbing me without it. Is that likely to ever happen? Thankfully not. Plenty of women lives their lives safely without guns. But as the saying goes, I'd rather have it and not need it than need it and not have it. I should add that my dad taught me all about gun safety and responsible ownership from a young age. That last point is important. Even if you live in a big city, cops can take a long time to show up even if your call is literally you screaming that someone with a gun, knife is breaking into your house while shouting I'm going to kill you. If you call because you think that someone shady is lurking on your property, it can be 20 to 30 minutes. And in the meantime that person might start to break into your house. Meanwhile you can't get back on with 911 to report that things have escalated, nothing quite like getting hold music or a busy signal when calling 911 to make you think about getting a gun, really, I've had that happen trying to call the LAPD. Then. If you live out in a rural area you might be 30 minutes away, at a minimum, from cops arriving regardless of the circumstance. Growing up my parents had a cabin in northern Arizona and the closest cops were literally a 40 minutes drive away. Can't really count on that help arriving to save you from man or beast. Same reason I have most anything. Shooting is fun. Riding a motorcycle is fun. Camping is fun. I enjoy them, so I buy the gear to do them. Also there's an aspect of family tradition to shooting for me. My family bonds by going out to a field and tossing out clays for each other to shoot. We spend time together hiking and scouting game trails in preparation for hunting. And we have an annual tradition of filling pumpkins with danerite and blowing them up on Thanksgiving. My self-personally defense. I was a single woman living alone in some dangerous cities when I was younger so it brought peace of mind. I also took safety training classes for how to actually use it in a dangerous scenario so I didn't end up getting it taken and used on myself. My husband really enjoys target shooting and hunting as well. We almost exclusively eat meat he's hunted because if you can clean and package the meat yourself, it's a very cheap alternative to buying in a store. My entire family is also trained to use guns for the purpose of protecting our livestock. We raise cattle and calves can be coyote bait, so we often will have a gun with us when checking cows in case we spot a coyote messing with the cows. Everyone seems to have collective amnesia about summer of 2020 when there were feds wearing unmarked uniforms and driving unmarked vans snatching protesters off the streets. If they don't have to identify themselves as cops or charge you with a crime, they don't have to let you have a lawyer or a phone call either. People say they have to read you your rights or they have to charge you with a crime to hold you longer than 24 hours. No they don't. No one is going to make them. We got a little taste of dictatorship and for some reason people are still comfortable with the idea of those very same people being the only ones with guns. Self-defense, partly in the home but majority for hiking in the woods. I'd rather not be a predator food, great sport hobby, and always one I've shared with my dad, as well as friends. Everything from handguns to rifles to shotguns are fun in their own way. I particularly love trap shooting, nothing more satisfying than nailing a moving target. Guns are timeless, 
and last forever. I've got guns from before we I from my grandfathers on both sides. Some of them still shoot, too. Both my grandfathers are gone, so they're nice heirlooms. If you're an intelligent, responsible owner, guns are very safe. They are tools and or toys. And one last note, every time the debate comes up, I state that roughly 60% of gun deaths in the US are suicides. We need to talk about mental health reform before we talk about gun laws. We have the same shit in NYC, in a single point of entry apartment on the fifth floor. If Jason in a hockey mask comes in with a sickle I am obligated to run and flee first before I can even hit him with a baseball bat or my fists. Nonsense like this is why my wife and I bought a home in Texas. I was born in Canada and my entire family lives there still. I'm a US citizen and our tax level in NY is literally as high as Ontario with zero of the benefits, plus that crap. Texas is fucked too in its own ways but I'm overpaying for nothing and being constrained by laws that make zero sense. I hunt squirrels, rabbits, grouse, dugs, geese, deer, and elk. Guns make that quite a bit easier. I also bow hunt for deer. I enjoy the challenge of precision shooting and take pride in my ability. I don't own them for defense. I have younger kids so all of my guns are locked in a safe, and all the ammunition is locked in a separate safe. It would have to be an extremely patient attacker in order for me to use them for that purpose. Rural Maine. My 12-year-old niece was walking the orchards on our farm one late afternoon and came across a random guy hanging out on our property. We lived on a busy road and sometimes had transients hanging around. She ran to our house which was closest. Her mother's farm was adjacent to ours. We called the cops and told them we had a prowler. An hour and a half later, no show. So we called dispatch again. We were told the cops drove by and saw the lights were on in the house so they assumed everything was okay. Because you only get murdered in the dark. Most of my guns are heirlooms I've inherited and restored and I love to see that old wood come back to life and those dingy barrels shine up. One I'm not sure what to do with is my grandfather's L.C. Smith double barrel 12 gauge that he used to put food on the table. He fired it without realizing there was a mud dauber nest in one barrel and blew both barrels apart. He sawed it off one to short to be legal, and although the serial number shows it to be much older than we thought, 1902, I think. It's just a few years too young to be exempted by the ATF. Dear ATF, I'm no longer in possession of the barrel. We have one R, one shotgun, and one Glock. For us it's just the same as having a fire extinguisher. It's something that you wish you never have to use. But if that day ever comes, you'll be glad to have it. The world is a crazy place and you just never know. I'm by no means a gun nut but I was in the military and I did have to serve 3.5 years overseas. Numerous tours in the Middle East. The world is one scary ass place. Horrible things happen and horrible people exist. I pray America never turns that way. But if shit goes wild and we have to get the fuck out of Dodge, I'll be glad to have that heart on my back when it's my job to protect my wife and three kids. Because you can bet your ass they will have guns, whomever they may be. Life. Aside from hunting and helping farming relatives defending their cattle, the following really drove the need home. Working in high school a guy came at me with a knife to get into my workplace. Luckily my manager carried and was following me out and pulled his weapon. Guy stopped real quick. Shortly after high school, 
a 50-plus-year-old creeper waited behind the dumpster at work to jump a 15-year-old co-worker. The manager there also carried and ended that. Also real quick, friend marries a woman with baggage. Her ex breaks into their place at night and attacks with a knife. He kept a gun on the nightstand and the ex ceased to be a threat. Fast forward and my son's just been born and now I've taken the hint and got a gun. In a new city and a man breaks into our home, got the drop and he tore off. Nobody died in any but number three. But I know for a fact at this point that my military parents and grandparents were always right. Guns are tools, and like all tools. It's the person holding them that determines how good or bad the work done with them is. Edit. Since I've seen several comments with some misconceptions let me reiterate that three was a friend and not me and all were in three different areas over a large amount of time. I am 37 and have moved around a lot and the more places you go the more you can get into strange circumstances. It's a very reasonable concern. It is worth noting, however, that neither CWD nor Scrappy, the sheep equivalent from which CWD is thought to have originated, have been documented in animal to human transmission. This actually is immensely reassuring to me, when you consider how persistent prions are in a neutral environment, how long each of those diseases have been around and how much time people have spent outdoors in infected areas. Self-defense, where I live there are regular home invasions that sometimes result in death and I cannot rely on police to arrive in time to protect me. By the time they arrive I will already have been dead for 20 minutes. Edit. Since this got a lot of interest I will provide some extra information. I live in South Africa, out on the plots on the outskirts of a city. These plots are small-scale commercial farms with dairy cattle, orchards, butcheries, animal nurseries, etc. Homes here are quite isolated and far apart. If you scream, your neighbors won't hear you. Even in the city suburbs home invasions are common. People will drive around and if they see a homeowner outside their property they will pull up, jump out, put a gun against the homeowner's head and make them take them into the house and disclose all their valuables. Or they break in and catch the people inside off guard. A high school friend of mine lost his father in a midnight home invasion. His father was shot in the head in bed as he slept. Another schoolmate lost his grandfather when a robber climbed over the wall and shot his grandfather in their backyard. My cousin's ex-boyfriend was shot through the neck and killed by home invaders when he managed to untie himself and tried fleeing the house. They ran after him and just outside the front door they got him, and then on the street, rural dirt road, where I live one family was held at gunpoint for three hours as their house was cleaned out. Just four houses away from me an old couple who own a bed and breakfast were tied up while the invaders cleaned out their house. One of them boiled water in the kettle and then poured it over the legs of the old man. This happened in 2019. When I was at university, I phoned one of my classmates right in the middle of a home invasion at his house. I phoned him because we were writing a test the next day and I needed some help understanding some of the math we would be tested on. He didn't answer the phone. Instead it was some angry sounding guy who screamed at me over the phone at the top of his lungs. I don't want to talk to you, and then hung up. I phoned the police thinking that someone had stolen my friend's phone, but never followed up. The next day at university my friend showed up with his leg bandaged. He told us about the home invasion. He was tied up with his mother. His father was overseas on a business trip. 
One of the criminals cut his calf with a machete. He managed to successfully escape to the neighbor's house though and phoned the police, and was told they were made aware earlier of a possible robbery at their address, by me. The police arrived not long after but upon realizing that my friend had escaped the invaders had left the property and so the police unfortunately did not catch them. Every so often you hear some good news, that a homeowner managed to successfully thwart an invasion by discharging their weapon. In a house one road away from me, a homeowner shot and hit an invader on their stairwell. The criminals managed to get away in a vehicle but there was a trail of blood leading down the stairs and outside the house. Hopefully the crook didn't make it and got dumped somewhere in a shallow grave by his accomplices. I inherited a shotgun and a pistol. Whenever I'm home alone the pistol does not leave my side and the shotgun is hidden a place where I can quickly grab it but no one will be able to find it. When we arrived, they had their truck backed up to the front deck and were carrying out stuff and loading it into their truck. I waited for them to come out of the front door, pointed my gun at them and told them to drop our stuff and keep their hands up in the air. They did as I asked and we stood there face to face for an eternity. We could hear the sirens in the distance and it took forever for them to get there. As soon as they pulled into the driveway, I put the gun on the ground, put my hands in the air and backed away from the gun. The cops cuffed me and my wife as well as the two thieves until they could sort out what was going on. Number one is also my first reason, grew up in a hunting house, not fanatical but we hunted pheasant and deer in season, where guns were part of childhood education with absolutely zero tolerance for even joking about how they could be misused or mishandled. Some are heirlooms and others are for use at the range or in hunting but they are all locked in a gun safe with trigger locks etc etc. I don't at all understand anyone casually toting a gun around like a toy. As for number two, I'm sorry that happened to you. I can't imagine the adrenaline terror of that situation. It's lucky for everyone that you were all able to walk away. I grew up around guns. My father owned guns and we were taught that they were not toys. Before we could ever use them, he required us to receive formal training in their use. I have grown up respecting them as tools. About 12 years ago, my wife, son and I were coming home from picking up two of my son's friends so they could spend the weekend with us. We came home to find two men robbing our house. I held the two thieves at gunpoint while my wife called the cops. We live in a rural town near a river and there is only one bridge across the river about 10 miles away. It took the cops nearly 20 minutes to get there. What would have happened if I wasn't armed? I can't say, but I can say I am forever glad they chose to comply with my commands and didn't escalate the threat and I never was put in a position to have to fire. We didn't even have a town. We had a library, a post office, a gas station, and an antique shop that opened on the whim of the owner. On the other end of the county was the courthouse. There were two police officers and a dispatcher, sweet old lady, for the county and they operated out of the courthouse or the library depending on what end of the county they were on. It's a long narrow county, with nothing but back roads from one end to the other, so it would be about a 40 minute drive if you didn't want to wrap yourself around a tree or a deer. Dialing 911 or the local non-emergency number both went to the same sweet old lady. I'm in a very quiet waiting room at the hospital, waiting to get a room for a platelet transfusion. 
beds are taken up due to COVID so I'm reading Reddit while waiting. A lady was at the desk talking to the nurse about how she's in a lot of pain and saying that she's extremely scared. I just burst out laughing when I read this, right as she's finishing a sentence, dude. The looks I just got have my face bright red with a deer in headlights expression. Take this award and fuck off.